Bikes Guy here, back again with another live show. Uh, this show is obviously not in the studio, but I've got a studio show coming up pretty soon. And a lot of good things coming. Uh, Mavic Air 2. Mavic Air 2 new firmware version is out. Again, shout out to Daytona for reminding me because I hadn't, uh, hadn't powered on my Mavic Air 2 today. And I'm glad the Daytona mentioned that there's a firmware update because... I was able to fire up the Mavic Air 2 and download the latest and greatest firmware for the Mavic Air 2. Have you ever been in a situation where you went out in the field and discovered that uh, there was a firmware update, but you were kind of in a sketchy cellular area and it would take too long to download the firmware? So, you know, for that reason, I, I encourage all drone pilots to set a reminder anytime before you go to the field set a reminder and uh yeah geo one it does man <laughs> especially when you're out you're getting that cool footage and you're out in the middle of a lake or ocean and something and you're just on the edge of cellular so yeah always check from your from your wi-fi internet your fast internet and make sure you can get the make sure you got the latest firmware before you head out in the field so yeah, I'm going to be doing uh, extensive testing with the Mavic Air 2 with the latest firmware. Uh, you may have seen, you may not have watched it yet, if you haven't, check it out. But my Mavic Air 2 quick shots, where I went out in the field and, and I was playing again with the Mavic Air 2 quick shot modes, and I was trying to achieve 4K. Uh, but, unfortunately all three of my tests and i'll let you watch the video to see what happens so i don't know if that's because i didn't have the firmware version that was released today oh by the way and this will be a field test one of the features of the latest mavic air 2 firmware and i'm assuming it was released today i didn't check the release date i installed it today um well it wasn't on there yesterday sunday because i flew so it it either came out late Sunday or at some point Monday. The latest Mavic Air 2 firmware is supposed to have some sort of uh, 8K. And I don't think it's a, I, well, I'm actually pretty sure it's not 8K for video, but it's 8K for stills. So being able to capture a canvas that large for still photos, it's gonna be interesting to see how that looks. And one of my tests for still photos and, and again, I've owed y'all this for a while, is, uh, you know, comparing the still photo quality of the Mavic Air 2 to the still photo quality of something ridiculously high-end, like my A7R4 with the Sony G Master. <laughs> you know, that, that A7R4, is a, was it 62 megapixel? I mean, it's a beast. So, comparing the 8K photo quality of the Mavic Air 2 to that, Ought to be a pretty, uh, pretty cool test, man. Ooh, yeah, it's hot. But hot is good because that means you sweat. And when you sweat, you sweat out all the fat. Well, I don't know how that works, but that's the, that's the uh, objective at least. So, yeah, so what else we got going on? Uh, you know, again, this live show, it's open conversation you know as always keep it uh keep it appropriate for all age groups don't forget to click that little uh super chat button if you if you're feeling like it it's down there in the chat area and uh yeah just got a ton of stuff going on um let's see who was it that said i'm trying to thank the viewers thank of the viewer's name i don't have my chat in front of me but a long time viewer he said you didn't do an unboxing of the uh of the macbook pro and actually i didn't and what happened and this sounds my head's itching because i got too much sun and the top of my head's peeling man um i don't have fleas or anything but but yeah uh, so what happened with my 2018 macbook pro 15 inch and this and I love Apple, but this is this is crazy. The battery started to swell in the 15-inch 
or I guess I should say 15.4 inch MacBook Pro. The battery started to swell. Uh, Philippe, hello, how are you? Did you watch the video yet? Dude, I, I have not, I, I saw your message with the video link. I haven't watched it yet. I watched a little bit of it and I clicked like, but I haven't, uh, I came a little late. What did the latest, well, I just installed the Mavic Air 2 firmware. Haven't, haven't flown with the latest Mavic 2 Air 2 firmware yet, but one of the things that stood out is 8K. Obviously 8K for photos, not 8K for videos. So uh, it looks like there's some enhancements with some of the, I mean, I just, granted, I just sped read through everything, but it looks like some of the tracking stuff's probably gonna be improved. Well, it's, let's put it this way. The Mavic Air 2 firmware update, it seems to be a very significant update. So I can't wait to take it out in the field and see how well or how poorly it performs. You know, again, always important to keep your DJI drones to keep the firmware updated. And that's, uh, again, I don't know if this firmware released today or if it was yesterday, because see, I flew yesterday afternoon, Sunday afternoon. And at the time of then, at the time of that flight, there was no firmware update available. At least it didn't alert me if there was. So thanks to Daytona in chat, uh, Daytona posted a comment very nice comment along the lines of hey man you know Mavic Air 2's got a new firmware out so that's how I was alerted and that's why I powered on my Mavic Air 2 and updated the firmware and actually I took advantage of the situation and I've got a video that that I edited and it's uploading now and a lot of people may laugh at this but it's how to update Mavic Air 2 firmware I mean you know a lot of us are are seasoned drone pilots you know we We've been in the hobby for a long time, but you know, there's always newbies. And you know, when you say how to put on, you know, how to update the firmware, how to attach the drone's propellers, I mean, those videos provide value. One of the longest, one of my many most popular videos is how to get the, how to take the GoPro camera out of the packaging, how to take the GoPro camera out of the box. You would not believe how many views, and I don't have the stats in front of me right now, but hundreds of thousands of video views because people bought a GoPro, and if you've ever bought a GoPro, it's kind of in that rectangular shaped box. And it's challenging. If you've never used a GoPro before, how do you get it out of the box? <laughs> so it's funny the kind of stuff that provides value that for seasoned GoPro users or seasoned drone pilots, you know, you get so used to it that you fail to realize that, you know, hey, there's something that you may be doing as a routine task that if you took the time to document those steps, anything, so things that break, um, you know, my washer, you can't buy appliances nowadays you can find the video on my channel and and again i'm not here to to give any brand a bad name because that's not my objective but you know they're a top brand and my dishwasher failed and i've had several dishwashers fail but you know one time it failed and i was able to troubleshoot and resolve myself without a service call so with that being the case you know i saw that as being a YouTube how-to video opportunity. So I documented the steps performed and I've had hundreds of people say like, dude, you know, you just saved me a service call, you know, thank you so much. And you know, that's great to hear that it fixed it. And you know, so anything, you know, even if it's something simple that you do, you know, it doesn't have to be something you do uh, repetitively but something maybe you've done once, you know, you fix something. You know, how do you, here was another one, how to unlock a Volkswagen's door with a regular key. <laughs> Go to a Volkswagen lot, walk up to a Passat, and try to find the hole to insert a physical key. You're probably not the first person that's felt stupid. And it's actually really simple, you can watch my video, but 
that video, I got a comment from somebody and I'm not quoting precisely, but the gist of it was, hey, you saved me. I was at, at uh, Six Flags at night and locked out of my car. Something along those lines. So basically somebody couldn't get in their Volkswagen. They Googled it. They found my video and with a dead battery in their VW's car key, they were able to eject the physical key and get into their Volkswagen and travel safely home. Now, if you've ever been to Six Flags in Atlanta, you know that can be a dangerous place. So, you know, it, it's uh, it's interesting, you know, the types of tutorials that, that you'll discover. So my best advice for everyone, especially if you're, you know, if you're into creating YouTube videos and you're looking for topics, just throughout a day, any problem that you solve or any curiosity that you have, you know, jot it down. You know, if you use an iPhone, keep you a, uh, a note document open. That's a little app for iPhone where you can take notes. Keep a notes document open. And what I do, I've got one that's simple. It's entitled YouTube To-Do List. So anything that the viewers share with y'all, with me rather, like during this live show, I take notes. You know, I add it to my to-do list. You know, anything that I encounter throughout a day, during the day, and it seems to be of substance, I add to the to-do list. Because my objective with this channel, you know, anything can be an adventure. It's how you, how you choose to present or how you choose to relay that adventure, adventure with others. You know, is it exciting? Is it boring? And, you know, an adventure can be something of, of uh, educational value. Likewise, adventure can be, you know, a hobby. It can be a travel destination. You know, adventure is such a broad topic. So, you know, you don't, you shouldn't, with YouTube, you shouldn't niche down too much. Because if you niche down too much, you force of would be uh, highly valuable YouTube video topics. You know, like locked out of the Volkswagen or how to repair a dishwasher. And you know, why is that on a, you know, another example, bought a TV, leading brand, deeply discounted. I, I don't buy expensive stuff. I buy nice stuff, but you know, I try to, well, I don't try, I do, I do bargain shop as much as I can. And bought this TV, didn't work. And, uh, and you know posted a video about it and just said you know hey here's what happened now, i'll go ahead and say it was a vizio tv works great now but what happened vizio pushed a firmware update to their tvs i got this particular tv number one because it was deep deeply discounted number two because it was the largest size that i could fit in that corner of my studio and still have 4k hdr it works great now but they had released firmware updates for that Vizio that were non-working. So, you know, since you couldn't opt out of the firmware updates for the Vizio TV, it would automatically force load the firmware, which after loading would brick the TV. So, you know, talk about quality control. Now I understand, you know, we've, we've been through where we're going through a very challenging time and they were probably short staffed, but being short staffed is no excuse for allowing your firmware updates to go to production. You know, at a minimum, Vizio should have allowed customers to have a rollback option. You know, re roll back to previous firmware version that works. I mean, yeah, the previous firmware may not have all the bells and whistles, but at least it's functional. It doesn't break your TV. <laughs> so yeah find those things in everyday life that are good negative combination of both um and document those experiences in the form of youtube videos and you'll be surprised at the type of traction you may be able to get and uh again if you're you know if you're looking to get serious with the uh with the youtube game you know hit me up you know i provide i'm always interested in collaboration but i also provide professional social media consulting services so you know if you're 
if you and or your organization are, are really wanting to create the framework for something that can that can grow itself, you know, let me know. I mean, it's it doesn't have to be a convoluted process. And, you know, there's a lot of components that that are beyond YouTube that work well with YouTube. Winfred C., thanks. Thanks. Uh, that's a great idea. Thanks for sharing. No problem, man. Thanks for, thanks for watching. And Winfred, I know you're around a lot, and, you know, that's, that's what I like most about this channel is seeing, you know, familiar faces and, and uh, you know, obviously in the world of in YouTube, it's not, a, it's not a familiar face. It's a familiar screen name, and that means a lot, you know. It's, uh, you know, this adventure should just continue to evolve. And one of the things, and again, I, I want to say thanks again to, uh, to Brad and then also to Hybrid Life. Um, you know, the last studio live show I had, we were able to get Brad in face on video. Jeff, welcome aboard, sir. Welcome aboard. Um, and I want to do some more live face on video for, uh, you know, for live shows. So if you're interested, shoot me a message. And I'll see if I can get you on a live show because I think, you know, incorporating multiple people into a live stream makes it more conversational, makes it more entertaining for the guests. I mean, for the viewers. So, huh. sorry. Um, yeah, so that's the next component, you know, creating more uh michael welcome back sir have a nice evening sir you too hope your weather there is good man we got blue skies we got a little bit of clouds up there saw an airplane or two fly by i don't want to get on an airplane until all this <laughs> stuff clears but when it does man curacao here comes our skies adventure channel uh, curacao is probably the next travel destination unless i've got some uh i've got some business to take care of in st bart's i've uh, been there actually i was a very, i had a very abbreviated stay in st bart's but it's a place that i want to go back and uh more thoroughly document because that's a that's an interesting little island it's french it's very uh <laughs> let's say this it's a very affluent island but even though it is, you know, and even if, you, I mean, you're there, and I mean, there's, there's yachts in Gustavia, which is their little harbor. I shouldn't say little. I mean, it's small, it's a small island, but, I mean, you've got these mega yachts that are hundreds of millions of dollars, and just people just roaming around, roaming around St. Bart's. And there I am on St. Bart's, and a few people ask me, like, dude, why, you know, why do you have a camera here? And I'm like, oh, I'm just capturing the view, man capturing the views and uh you know but most of the time what you'll find you know even even when you're in these environments that that could otherwise be ultra snooty you know it's just all about uh it's all about how you present yourself you know you know and my thing is is uh you know i'm there for a purpose and why well, actually i'm there for two two purposes purpose number one to capture a ton of videos and put them on Irish Guys Adventure Channel and share the adventure with the world. Travel videos are huge. And if you can capture travel videos and deliver them in a way that is unique, you know, don't go to Travel Destination X and only film the same things that all the other YouTube channels and big television networks filmed. You know, look for the, look for the niche content within popular desti within that exists within popular destinations. So for example, don't just go to St. Bart's and go to leading resort name, blah, 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 or top restaurant, blah, blah, blah. Go to St. Bart's and create an exciting itinerary for people that may be going there. You know, kind of off the beaten path type stuff. And you know, that, that's what I found. Where I found the value truly exists within travel videos. Travel videos, obviously, are one of my most 
uh, you know, aside from drones, one of my most favorite topics because to capture those um, travel videos means I've got to be there. And, you know, it's most of the time, unless it's a repeat destination like the U.S. Virgin Islands, um, most of the time I have no idea where I am and I'm using uh, Google Maps and my GPS to get around. And, you know, I'm mapping that out. So I've got, you know, for the viewer, their map, you know, here's, here's a cheap place to rent a car. You know, are you going to come to this island? Are you going to, are you going to take a water taxi? Are you going to fly in? You know, here's how to do it on the cheap. Um, you know, cause I'm not here. Yes. And, and granted, I will cater to a lot of the, uh, of the one percenters. I mean, I will, because these islands are frequented, frequented rather by a lot of the one percenters, you know, the ultra wealthy, but you know, even though these videos provide value for them, the, the primary target audience is just your average Jane and Joe that, you know, they've looked at cruise destination, cruise vacations, and, you know, cruises seem like a good deal. You know, you're getting, and actually there probably will be some really good <laughs> cruise deals now because of the times we're in, but um, the reality is, is that if you look past the uh just the cost per week say you're doing a seven night cruise if you look past that and then you tack on okay now if i don't get the drink package if you tack on all of that you know taking into account the food that you may consume off the ship the uh, beverages that you may consume on the ship the gratuity um you know any sort of souvenirs you may pick up while in port Cruises don't seem to be that cheap after that. So, you know, my, my target person or, you know, or couple or whatever, you know, maybe you're going out, going out with some chick or something and, and she's, you know, you want to impress her and you want to take her somewhere cool. So, so you just, you know, you're like, hey, let's go to insert island here. And it's like, whoa, you know, they think you're big time. And that, you know, they can think that that's cool. But the reality is, is that you've got a strategy for doing all of this. You can find the cheapest airfare. You can find a rental house. You know, it may not be the nicest place, but typically between, you know, the low $100 mark US per night, up as high as maybe $200 US per night. Super nice place. You know, when I go to these islands, I'm staying like a local with very nice accommodations. And for an entire week, I'm typically spending less than a person would, you know, if they went to the resort, that maybe they would, instead of having a week, maybe they would have one or two nights, but I'm doing it on the cheap. The rental cars, one thing, never, and I repeat, never, be like, well, you know, I've got all these I've got all of these points with, you know, rental car brand XYZ, you know, the big chains. Might as well use those while I'm in the Caribbean. No, 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 no. Never do that. Made that mistake, had the same problem. Uh, at the time, I'd worked for a, uh, for a Fortune 100 company for many years. And I had accumulated a lot of points for a popular rental car company. Did it in St. Thomas. Got there, you know, no big deal. Hey, I'm here. Got my reservation. Oh, we're sorry, sir. We're out of cars. Oh, you're out of cars. Well, I booked this a month ago. Now, you got to keep in mind, states or other country. It's very laid back, very, you know, if you get, if you seem to be, you know, upset or, or pushy, you're not going to get anywhere. So the thing was, oh, okay, well, you know, it is what it is lesson learned never use a rental car chain in the caribbean even if you have points to to get that car for free because there may not be a car use the local outfits they'll treat you right typically they'll they'll pick you up at the airport um one that i use in uh the u.s virgin islands and i'll plug them they haven't paid me to do this discount car vi it's not the chain discount it's a local outfit 
they're based right down the street from the from uh Cyril E. King Airport, which is St. Thomas's International Airport. They will pick you up. They come to the front of the airport where you get out of, you know, baggage. You get your bag, you walk out on the street. <laughs> There's this little yellow marked area just a few feet over from the other road and uh, from the other lane. And you stand there and they wave, they pick you up, they take you to their, they pick you up in your Jeep very nice, very clean. They take you to their very nice, very clean office. You sit down, you sign the paperwork, and off you go. Take that Jeep, stay on St. Thomas, take that Jeep, cruise to the east end of St. Thomas, get on the car ferry, the car barge, to be correct, and take it over to St. John and have a nice set of wheels throughout the week or however long you stay. And when you bring it back, you just go back to their rental car office they check it out, make sure you're honest and you didn't damage the vehicle and that you filled it up with gas and they take you back to the airport and you're gone. And they always get a good tip. You know, I'm cheap, but when it comes to quality customer service, I'm gonna give you a good tip. So I always give them a good tip. And usually if I have leftover rum or whatever, I'll, hey man, you want these extra bottles of rum and makes them happy. So yeah, never use, never use a, a chain for rental cars in the Caribbean. And the same is applicable, man, when I'm down in uh, Providentialis in Turks Caicos, there's a place there that's wonderful. It's called, uh, I think it's Scooter Bob's or Canada Bob's. And it's just a, uh, you know, it's a local outfit. They treat you right. And, uh, you know, that's that's the way that, uh, the way it should be. Actually there, I got out of the airport in Providentialis and walked out and they said, you'll see your name on the dash of the car. Open your car, the keys will be under the seat. And sure enough, they were. Didn't even have to check into a rental car office. Just got my car and that car actually broke down about halfway, about halfway through the trip. And I called them up and I'm like, hey man, I said, I know this stuff happens, but oh, no problem. So I was at a marina waiting to get on a yacht to go out and deep sea fish. And uh, they brought me another car. Here you go. Excellent customer service. Same for St. Kitts. I can't remember the name of the rental car outfit in St. Kitts, but it was local, uh, super friendly folks. Um, you know, that, that's the way to do it. You know, and that's, not only is it more affordable, but it's just a better overall experience, it's a better overall experience, and you're supporting the locals. You know, you're not supporting the big international chains, which nothing wrong with that either, but you know, it's when a local outfit can give you better prices and a better customer service experience, hey, they're gonna, end, they're gonna earn my business every time. So yeah, with that being said, you know, there's a lot coming to this channel beyond drones. And the channel right now, because of the situation that we're all part of, there is a travel ban. You know, Irish Guys Adventure Channel is unable to travel right now. That's, that's uh, a disallowed activity. And it's, you know, it's not only, it's not only for the safety of others, but it's for the safety of my crew. And, you know, you got, you got to make sure, you know, you're not, you're not getting sick and you're not making others sick because as soon as this stuff clears, it's going to be off to the races, dude. Um, you know, I'm doing everything I can to have those boom, 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 rapid, uh, travel destination, A, B, C, D, E, you know, back to back. So as soon as this COVID clears, there are gonna be some adventures on this channel. You'd be like, whoa, we may even work New Zealand into that. Now that, the only thing about New Zealand that's gonna be problematic is that uh, I cannot stand flying and I don't know if I could stand being in an airplane that long. So, you know, at least, at least for the Caribbean, you know, it's not, it's not a long flight, you know, you just, Take you some Jägermeister and, and, and get on the plane, you're good. But I mean, you, you couldn't stay Jägered up all the way to New Zealand. Be, uh, that would be supposed to be problematic. So coming beyond drones, um, and you know, I do have some drone videos right now in the studio that are, that are running compressor. Likewise, I've got some flights that I'm about to perform with the latest DJI Mavic Air 2 firmware. So be interesting to, you know, to get to get my feet wet with the latest firmware 
for Mavic Air 2, see what it's improved upon, see what it, you know, it can always break stuff too. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not fair to be overly optimistic about, uh, you know, firmware updates, even though it does come from what I feel is the most reliable drone manufacturer, DJI. And I say that, and I reiterate this because I always get the dude, you're just a DJI fanboy type comments. That's fair because, you know, I, I could I could come across that way because I talk about DJI so much, but there's no competition. Yeah, there's other drones that are manufactured, but they can't compete currently. Uh, 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 excuse me. Ah, I ate a bunch of corn, man. I ate a bunch of corn on the cob. Got the belching. Have you been to Hawaii? Actually, I've been several times. I've been to Lanai, Kauai, Oahu. Kauai, Lanai, Oahu. Yeah, those, those three. And Kauai, I was super little, so I don't really remember it. Maui, I've been twice. And Lanai, I've been once. And uh, I like it there, but honestly, man, you know, flying from L.A. to... Uh, 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 we we just fly directly into Maui. Um, it's a long flight, man. And it's cool. I like it. But, dude, the last time I went, and I haven't been to Hawaii since 2009. And the last time I was there, it had grown up so much since, you know, I was there about 10 years prior to that. Well, about actually 99 or 2000. And Maui, man, just like, boom, it's like businesses everywhere. And I'm like, I just, I hate to say it, man. I love, I love the, the temperature. The climate down there is great. I love the food. Um, and I love the, oh man, their fruit juices and all of that are outstanding. Mama's Fish House in Paia, Maui is the best, one of the best restaurants that I've, that I've been to. Um, but it's, it's just such a long flight and it's, man, it's, it's gotten expensive too, man. I mean, that's the thing about the Caribbean. You can go you know, and do the, do the stuff like I was talking about, and, and you don't have... Now, a Grand Cayman is kind of an exception. It's getting, especially Seven Mile Beach area, it's pretty built up. You know, you, you go to Seven Mile Beach on Grand Cayman, and you feel like you're, you're in a Hawaii type thing. You know, you got all the high rises and this, that, and the other. So, but the other islands, man, you know, you're out, <laughs> you're out in the jungle, you know? I mean, that's, that's kind of the way I like it, and I don't know. I mean, I may go back to Hawaii in the future, but I don't know. It's just the cost, the time, you know, the time change. You know, if you're coming from the United States, it's a, you know, you gotta, you gotta adapt. And if you're not there for a few days, you know, it's, it's by the time you're adapted, you're going home. And uh, I don't know, but I do miss. Yeah, Mama's Fish House there is one of the. I got a new favorite now and it's it's kind of it's kind of pricey not super pricey but it's uh it's called morgan's mango and that's in st john in cruise bay mm. they have a different special every night of the week i dropped <laughs> it, it was, it's sad to say this but my wife and i dropped in about a week probably around 800 dollars or so of food in that restaurant because it's so good man i mean you know some things you know and again i like to be cheap and i like to find a deal and I like to share those tutorials with others but sometimes stuff is so good man you just got to go back you got to go back and it's like well you know what i'm just gonna eat like a eat like a king and then for the next week or so eat chef boy rd you know it's all about how you how you budget your food allowance and yeah, that's an exceptional place. Uh, Spice Mill on St. Kitts is exceptional. Zozo's that was used to be in the Sugar Mill in Canil Bay until the hurricane hit. It was exceptional and it was going to reopen, but at least the current update that I've received is that Zozo's has been, uh, I wouldn't say rescheduled, I would say it's been discontinued, which is disappointing because that was really good, really good food. Um, Bermuda is chock full of great restaurants. Jake says, hi from Kingston, Ontario. 
Um, late to the party. I just thought I would drop in before I used the chat site. Very cool. Welcome, man. Uh, Jake's one of the one of the repeat viewers, and if you want to hear about uh, if you want to hear about uh, foghorns, he is the he and Terry Peppers are the experts when it comes to foghorns. So that's that's uh, that's always interesting. I've never heard of Omegle. What, what is Omegle? Or Omegle? Omegle? Never heard of it. What is it? Hey, what is Omegle? Switching hands, kind of getting tired in that hand. It's a chat site. Okay. Is it kind of like a... I use a Discord. I do... Uh, I do some penny stocks and I use a, a tool for that called Discord. Is it kind of a similar chat tool? Ho -ho. We got blue skies. Got a bunch of people tuning in. Where's everybody? Well, not to be, you know, I'm not sitting here probing for information. Where's everybody from? I know, I know Jake's from Ontario and, uh, it's very interesting, but watch you find. Yeah, I'm not into that that kind of chat stuff. It that's the problem when you when you step beyond YouTube. You can run into some real weirdos, man. And you know, YouTube, that's one thing I'll give them credit for. Um, they seem to do a pretty good job of keeping it, you know, keeping the community clean, if you know what I mean, you know. So that's a good thing. But yeah, I don't know. So, Michigan. I said Michigan. Go one is from Michigan. Welcome. From Green Bay. Now in San Antonio. But that's if you use the restricted section. Southern California. Mister Sinister. Good deal. We've got a very international crowd here, which is good. It's always good to have. Uh, you know, to have people from from without the world so don't forget to super chat <laughs> super chat by the way is available in all countries and currencies rather good mexican food here oh i bet man um you know i've been to california a few times and actually before it was right before this pandemic hit i was invited out to uh, google's headquarters for a uh I forget what was the event. I'm pretty sure it was canceled because of, the, uh, uh, you know, the the Google event. I forget the name of that event, but it was it was for people, you know, like my snaps. And you know, those contributions include photos, written reviews, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, if you're ever searching for, let's say, a restaurant or a vacation rental or a hotel so uh, I forget the status that I am on the Google map pretty high I mean it was high enough to get invited to Google so that was uh, in the uh, you know after this pandemic comes it says and if you're single you might meet the perfect <laughs> No, dude, I'm not saying I'm married, dude. I am married. So, um, yeah, so, uh, let's see, what else? Yeah, so that'd be cool to go to Google. I've been to YouTube Space in New York a few times, and that's that's always a fun uh, fun studio. Just Google's so chill, man. I mean, their, their culture is, uh, is very... Uh, very laid back you know you just walk in there you get a bottle of water some chips i mean i know it's nothing for google but you know to be able to walk in there and just pick that up and not well you owe 75 cents a dollar sir you know that was for anyone who was interested by the way that's what jake said yep um so yeah i used to uh yeah i've been i've been married for a long time but i used to play the game on uh back back before i was married and yeah, I had a, this was back, 
this was back in the early, in the mid 2000s you know when i was single and i you know you go out you go out to the bars and and just uh meet all these girls or whatever you know that was cool but you know it was just always it was never really anything good so i had this strategy and i went through um i went through the was it the dating site at the time match.com and i went through that and i just had this wink strategy so i'd go through and just wink at all these girls and then see the ones that wink back and then i talked to them and i actually had a few uh had a few good dates out of match.com and then i had some that were just i mean it was hideous you know it's like you show up and and i mean you know i'm not gonna be i'm not gonna be rude about it but you show up and it's it's obvious that their profile photo was like from i have been uh I have been married for, I don't know, how long have I been married? I've been married for, uh, I got married in 2009, man. And it is 2020. <laughs> Whoa, it's a long time. But, yeah, yeah, it's a different, it's a different playing field now, I'm sure, man. If you were, if you were single trying to get out and, get out and find some women or whatever, you know, you got, you got all these new tools. You got more than Match.com and the bar. Bars were just so expensive. You know, you go out and buy drinks, and then I, mean, I don't know. It was just it was stupid. But anyway, yep. So interesting, interesting stuff. Interesting. So back to the drone stuff. Got some drone videos in the works, and gotta get those published. And man, it's getting hot, so I think I'm gonna. I've burned. Eh, I burned about 500 calories, which is not enough. Because I ate a bunch of corn and steak and stuff. Jake says, I've known my girlfriend Katie for about six years as a friend and two years in relationship wise. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah, you, you just gotta. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, if you're single, that's all good. You know, actually, if, it's, if you're single, it's a lot cheaper. But, you know, if, if you're married, um, <laughs> yeah, if you're married, it's a lot more expensive. That's, uh, oh, and my girlfriends and sisters say hi. So we got, we've got McKenna and then the M, Maya, McKenna, and you haven't said your girlfriend's name what's well actually you just did let me see my chat went away katie maya mckenna did i get those three right i try to i try to remember this stuff oh boom awesome man these memory games these mind games keep you keep your mind fresh and that's the thing you gotta and one place where they are and so good with sales they genuinely genuinely remembered your name i mean there's there's actually some techniques and, and again i'm not in sales but i know people that are remembering names remembering job titles this that and the other and the way i do it i've got a somewhat photographic memory uh, although it did fail yesterday because i forgot maya's name uh if you want mckenna says you can call her short uh mac and katie says you can call her there you go that's something else to remember but yeah if you've got people that have a photographic memory can remember things without the pointers and i I've got a somewhat photographic memory, although I forgot uh, Maya's name yesterday. But if you don't have a photographic memory, you can you can often associate. You know, when you see somebody, you know maybe it's the uh, you know something they wear or, or whatever. You know, just something when you see them, and then associate whatever that color or object is with a uh, with their name. Yeah, it's it's easy and see that's the thing i mean sales sales is such a a profession full of fluff in my opinion i've i've never um 
I've never liked salespeople because they're often very, uh, what's the word for it? They're often very fake. Uh, they're often very manipulative. And ultimately with sales, you know, who, who does a salesperson want to remain number one? Probably themselves. And that's because, you know, sales is a very competitive space. So, you know, if you can be the top salesperson, you know, you're kind of the king. And, and that's, you know, and for that reason, many, most, and not to overgeneralize, but I will overgeneralize. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, most of these salespeople are very fake and manipulative and, and are not trustworthy, trustworthy people. And, uh, you know, that's something to always, always keep in mind. Uh, but with that being said, yeah, we're going to get some drone hoods up and uh, look forward to y'all's feedback for the drone videos. Lovely face full of girl hair. There you go. Um, so, yeah, uh, we'll do the, do the do the drone videos. I've got the how to update the firmware. And then hopefully within the next few days, I'll have the firmware test, you know, testing the Mavic Air 2 with the latest firmware. See how that performs for us. So with that being said, um, thanks everyone for tuning in as always. Uh, thanks for your super chats and, and I will see y'all next time. I'm gonna do a little bit more walking and then get some drone videos. So thanks as always for the good chat. Y'all be safe, have fun and stay, uh, stay